Hey, it's Tom from Texas, and it's time for another floppy deep dive. And it's been a little while since I made a video, took a little break, but now I'm back, ready to make some more videos again, and I want to share with you some of the original software that I picked up. You know, growing up, all I had was cracked versions of everything, so to get originals of games is my new favorite thing to do for the Commodore 64. So I was going to share with you some of the ones that I picked up. So I've got Street Sports Basketball pretty good shape. The, love the Street Sports series and everything about it. I uh, uh, also got World Games, also a classic. Again, another Epics game. Again, love these huge big boxes that this all came in here with the software. Got another Street Sports. Uh, this was Street Sports Soccer, which uh, again, big box, looks really good. Love to add that to my collection. Then I got Sporting News Baseball, another Epics game. Uh, I loved any kind of baseball back in the day. This one wasn't my favorite of all the favorites, but I love collecting any of the baseball because I played all of them when I was a kid. This is one of my favorites I picked up recently because the Airborne Ranger, uh, one of my favorite games from Micro Pros, and just thought it was so cool to be able to add that to my collections. Everything in here from the keyboard layout and everything. So loving this one. Also picked up the fun one of Caveman at Olympics. I've had some of the original disc. I actually have two versions. Now I've got three versions of like man, but I never had the box and everything that came with it. So now I've got the official of everything with the Caveman at Olympics. And this one's pretty good shape too. And good old G.I. Joe by Epics. Also uh, always love this one. I know there's no ending to it. A lot of people complain about, but I loved being able to play G.I. Joe when I was a kid and this was really a cool one and love to add this one to my collection. And then this is one of my the other baseball that I really love. So this is championship baseball. So this was by GameStar and this was a little upgrade to the Star League baseball which was my favorite of all time that I would play my brother all the time on. And this was a little bit of an upgrade that they did to it. And I uh, just love this one, loved adding this to my collection. I want to get the Star League Baseball, the original one, but I uh, haven't come across that yet. But I just keep uh, looking for, like I said, originals. I love getting in the box and the manual and the floppy that came with it. And just really happy with these to add to my collection. And we're going to do another version of What's on That Floppy. So I've got six games on this What's on This Floppy that we're going to go over. Um, actually, some interesting games. I'll be interested if y'all have seen all these or ever played any of all these. So let's go ahead and pull up a chair, grab a joystick, and let's get started. So the first game we're going to be looking at today is the Pro Boxing. And this boxing game came out in, I believe, 1985. And it is definitely, eh, I would say it's right in the middle of the road. Kind of mediocre uh, type of a boxing game. Uh, yeah, the coolest part of everything with this boxing game is between rounds you get to see what your opponent and what your face looks like so you would get like a bloody nose or a black eye and so your your nose would be all bashed in and, and anyway they so, show that picture so you get to see your boxer after each time and and I would say that was the best part as for the fighting and actually doing it it's very slow, um, the movement's not very crisp to be able to do it. It's an early boxing, 1985, it's one of the earliest boxing games, if not the, the first one on the Commodore 64, because uh, I know other ones came after it, and other ones uh, looked better than this and, and played better than this, and I think this was the first and one of the earliest ones that we had that we could be able to play it. But I would give this one a C. Uh, we're, so we're starting off with the pro boxing, and um, yeah, I would grade this a C, saying it's just okay. And like I said, the best part is seeing the face and seeing it all busted up. So let's go on now to the next game. So the next game that we're going to be looked, looking at is PSI Warrior. And this game 
looks really, really cool. So you start off, you, your guy kind of looks like uh, Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe, right? And you're, you're, and you're skating around on the skateboard, and you have a gun, and you could shoot, and, and, and you can go up and down this different thing. But it's very complicated. It's very... Uh, you know, I'm not exactly sure what I was doing. Having this as a crack game, I don't have a manual, so I'm not sure exactly what I need to get done. I did do a little Googling, and I read that this is just a gigantic silo that you're in, and you're trying to reach the source at the foot of the silo to destroy it, and that there's some guards in here. I didn't run across anybody while I'm just going around. Maybe I didn't get low enough. Um... But I didn't come across anything to shoot or anything attacking me. So apparently I was pretty high up and needed to get back down. But I never really could get into this game. Uh, it had great potential. It looked really cool. It looked like something that, you know, I would definitely play. But when, like I said, when you don't have a manual and you're just trying to figure things out, it gets a little bit old just going back and forth, back and forth, and nothing really happening. So on this one, eh, again, I would give it a C, uh, maybe a C plus because the graphics are cool. And if I knew exactly what I was doing, maybe this is something that I could just jump into and play and get occupied and, and, and play it for day after day. But... I just could not get into this one. And so, like I said, I give it a C plus because I do love the movement. That's the coolest part of this whole game is how you could go back and forth on and, and, and basically full circles where you could swivel on this uh, skateboard, you know, back to the future kind of hoverboard that you're drive, riding around on, which is probably the coolest part of it all. But So that's PSI Warrior. So now let's jump to the uh, last game on the front side and see what that is. So the last game on the front here is the Rocky Horror Show, which is a video game that was based off the musical of the same name. And it was, this was published by the CRL Group. And it was released on a bunch of systems. Apple II, of course this Commodore. Commodore 128 actually had its own separate release. Uh, ZX Spectrum and the Amstrad CPC. And this game, you know, I liked it from the start. I liked the music playing it, the little haunted house when you first pops up with the thunder and lightning in the background. I thought that was cool. If you're big into the Rocky Horror Show, and I can't say I was, I was never one of those. I never did go to the movie theater and go and do all, what all those people do and reenact. Anyway, but the game, I'm aware of it, right? And I'm aware of, of the different stuff. And the game was actually pretty good, and they they pretty good put it put it together pretty well. Um, I hear that there's different versions, like the Spectrum version was was. Uh, better than uh, the Commodore 64 version. I'm not sure. I, I didn't check it out. This is the only one that I've ever had. But I actually give this one a B. Uh, you're basically, what you're doing is you're going around and you're trying to, you're either controlling Brad or Janet and you're collecting pieces of the Medusa machine from around the castle because you got a D Medusa, the player's partner. And so, you know, the other characters keep trying to slow you down. And I think uh, uh, the different players, Riff Raff and Eddie, they, they can actually kill you. But of course they touch you and you lose your clothes and you're trying to, then you gotta find your clothes. It's just, it, it's like I said, not a bad game. It was actually put together really well. If you haven't checked this one out, I would recommend checking it out. But like I said, the Commodore 64 version, I, everything I read, they was criticized for running slow compared to the other versions. But like I said, this is all I know, and I, and I would give this one a B. So now on the back side, we've got three more games, and the first one we're going to be looking at is Griffin. And Griffin, I was having problems getting this one to load up um, on my Commodore 128. Just didn't want to. It would load and just freeze. So I loaded it up on my Commodore 64, and it actually worked on my Breadbin Commodore 64, but it would freeze again when I tried to use it on my Commodore 64C. So it's a really, really touchy type game. 
didn't work on all machines, even though I just loaded the same game. One would work one time and one wouldn't work another time. So it did have really unique graphics for its time, uh, which wasn't bad at all. The graphics actually looked pretty good for it. Uh, There's different things that you uh, would do. Basically, you, you could troll this uh, mythical creature that's living in the land of dreams and legend. And you could fly with this. And and, and there's, uh, like I said, had had pretty decent graphics and everything. It's just I had so much problems with it. And I, I read somewhere that uh, level two was, had a bug and all the different ones out there. So, so most likely the one that I have, since it is a cracked version, probably has the same bug on it. I never really got that far in it. It just kept dying every time I tried to do something. So, uh, like I said, looks pretty. I didn't think it played all that great, but some people love this one. I just give it average. Again, I would say, to say this was a C. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll check out the next game. So next we're going to be checking out Break Fever. Break Fever... Uh, was a breakdancing game that came out in 1984 for the Commodore 64. This one is not my favorite breakdancing game. Uh, this one was just okay. And trying to just make things move, I couldn't really feel like figure out the controls and so forth on this one. I just kept getting you is bad news every time I tried to do something. Uh, so... So again, not my favorite one. My favorite break uh, is Break Street. I thought that was an excellent uh, done uh, for break break dancing on the Commodore 64. But you could definitely tell that this got into the culture and break dancing was everywhere, and they were even making games out of it. As we all know, it was huge at the time. Uh, but this one just wasn't that great. Uh, I like the little Commodore sim symbol in the back, the, the Commodore crew. Uh, but I just couldn't really do anything with this. This one I give like a C minus. And so let's now go move on to the last game on this side. So the last game on this side is Blue Note Pinball. And Blue Note Pinball looks like, to me, a pinball game that was made and it's called Blue Note, has the little note on there. And it's just okay. For some reason I was thinking that there was a pinball designer that was on the Commodore 64 and it looks like one of them that someone did and just did a design of it or something. Could be wrong on that, but I'm, I, I, from memory, I'm just thinking that there was a, a, a pinball designer. But anyway, this one here uh, also came out around the 1984, uh, 1985 era. All these games are all in that same era of 1984 and this is just your basic pinball nothing too exciting actually kind of boring I would also give it a C minus so all these games on here I wish one would stand out you know uh, better than the other maybe Rocky Horror was probably the best of all of them to me in my opinion uh, they all can't be home run guys these were just so I'm going in order of they are in my collection. These are the I copied these together. I probably didn't load these games up as much. The pro boxing I did actually play quite a bit because I just liked seeing the face and there was no other boxing at the time, so that was pretty good. But overall, I give this floppy just a C. Uh, the games on here, not quite as good as the last floppy that we had, but I love going through there and looking at all these again because I just haven't seen them in so long so even if they were C's or whatever I still enjoy it just because love going through and having a reason to play these Commodore 64 games again so so let's stop here and get this wrapped up so I hope you guys like this episode tonight of what's on this floppy and checked out all these different games that were on here leave your comments down there I'm always interested to hear your thoughts and memories on any of these games or if you played them and what you think about them so until next time thank you for joining me on another floppy deep dive